So Diane Abbott has had her whip suspended from the Labour Party after a letter in the Observer, only which I can describe as pretty bad. This is what she said. Tamiwa Owale claims that Irish, Jewish and traveller people all suffer from racism. Now, racism is in quotation marks for some reason. Now, this is a response to the person's um, article about racism in Britain. It's not a black and white issue. It's far more complicated. So this is what Dan Abbott said. They unfortunately experience prejudice. This is similar to racism and the two words are often used as if they are interchangeable. It is true that many types of white people with points of difference, such as redheads, can experience this prejudice, but they are not all their lives subject to racism. In pre-civil rights America, Irish people, Jewish people, and travelers were not required to sit at the back of the bus. In apartheid South Africa, these groups were allowed to vote, and at the height of slavery, there were no white-seeming people manacled on the slave ships. Okay, um... So first off, hundreds of thousands of the GRT community and millions of Jewish people were literally murdered by the Nazis. You cannot say that these groups are somehow akin to receiving prejudice at the same level as having red hair. Now, I think what Diane Abbott was trying to make or trying to say is the point surrounding the hierarchy of racism. Now, there is a hierarchy of racism in which anti-Semitism is taken seriously, yet anti-GRT racism, Islamophobia, anti-black racism, are not. We see this every day in the media. We can see this inside the Labour Party, especially with the Ford Report. But the response isn't to diminish other forms of racism. It's definitely true that it's far easier to discriminate people based on their skin colour. Do you know who would know this? Diane Abbott. She has been on the receiving end of vile, disgusting racism her whole career. She was the most abused MP in Parliament. So you'd think that Diane Abbott would have a far better understanding of the matter, right? Her experience of racism, the way she sees it, could potentially be why she has written this letter, but there's still no excuse for this. Now, I think she's seeing this through the prism of colonial Britain, that the most prevalent form of racism historically and today in this country has been against the black community. Now, there does need to be a real debate in how we talk about different forms of discrimination and racism, which, had she had said that, would have been entirely acceptable and she would have been right but i'm just astonished that she essentially claims that the jewish people and the grt community face prejudice as the same as the color of one's hair it's just utterly delusional but i want to widen this because no one looks good in all of this now unsurprisingly some of the worst people have come out of the woodwork gleefully condemning her as if they haven't had issues of their own racism now Labour have been forced to suspend her. I don't think they had a choice. They're backed in the corner. I think suspending her and having an investigation is the right thing to do. Yet, it's funny how they haven't been as swift on other Labour MPs. What about Neil Coyle and his drunken abuse against journalists and colleagues within physical proximity? What about Peter Kyle calling Humza Yusuf Mohammed live on TV? What about Angela Smith who called brown people funny tinge? She left the party, but they gladly re-admitted her. What I find really interesting is the media response. Now, ironically, the media in calling out Diane Abbott by diminishing forms of racism have done the exact same thing. Diane Abbott suspended by Labour after letters suggesting Jews do not face racism. Diane Abbott has Labour whip suspended after hateful anti-Semitic remarks suggesting Jews do not face racism. Diane Abbott loses whip after suggesting Jewish people do not face racism. Diane Abbott suspended by Labour after suggesting Jewish people do not face racism. Are you noticing a pattern here? That's right. The mainstream media have completely omitted references to the GRT community. We have to remember that the media doesn't care one ounce about racism, and these headlines further provide proof to the hierarchy of racism. They obviously rightly call out her awful comments surrounding Jewish people, but once again, other communities are invisible. Which is what I find so frustrating about Abbott's comments. She had a chance to talk about the hierarchy of racism in which some forms are given attention and others aren't. Yet she completely undermines herself and the argument. Ironically, downplaying the racism the GRT community face instead of pointing out the obvious fact that they are completely invisible. After five years of smears of Corbyn's leadership and the left in general, Abbott has managed to completely undermine it. There are those once again cynically using this as a factional issue. There isn't a problem with the racism specifically on the left, but rather the left doesn't escape racism which is prevalent in all corners of society. 
Yet Diane Abbott has completely inflamed the BS narrative that it's a specific issue among the left. Now, through her career, she has been a staunch anti-racist campaigner. She was the first black woman to be elected to parliament. There's been so many important contributions from her. She has been an excellent voice for not just the black community, but for the working class in general in her political career. But her words on Sunday, is there any way back for her? And I don't know. I, I really don't like the idea that this can be some sort of process where, okay, she just makes a really good apology. Now I know she apologized, which it wasn't good enough. So if she makes a really good apology, that just seems a little bit cynical to me. To me, she'd have to not only do a really good apology, but she'd also have to show that she truly understands the racism that affects those who she referred to. Now, looking at Diane Abbott's career and looking at her past statements on anti-racism, I still think she has a pretty good grasp of anti-racism um, outside anti-blackness. But then what she wrote in that letter seems to show the opposite. So I feel if the communities, the Jewish community and the GRT community, feel that she is sorry and that she does understand, then maybe there is a way back for her. Well, maybe, honestly, she should probably just retire. I mean, she's 69 years old. She's had a long career in politics. And maybe the best thing for her and for the left is for her to retire in peace.